For anyone paying attention to US imperialism around the world, in particular its vast amount of military bases, Okinawa has always popped up on that radar. One of the world's largest and longest movements against US military bases come from the people of Okinawa. The island is riddled with bases. Nearly a quarter of the island is controlled and operated by the Pentagon. Out of all the US military presence in Japan, 70% of it is concentrated on Okinawa. These bases come with crime, environmental pollution, poisoning of drinking water, sexual abuse, noise pollution, displacement of residents, and in many cases, US military aircraft dropping equipment into playgrounds of elementary schools, placing children in danger. In short, the Okinawan people want the bases to be removed, but the US and Japan want the bases to stay. Why are there two completely opposite views on these bases and how did all this occur? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Let's start with a bit of history to explain how we arrived at today's situation in East Asia. First and foremost, the Okinawan people are a distinct nation of people. Remember, there is a difference between a nation state and a nation. Many nations exist in the world and not all of them have their own nation state. Many of these nations still live under the existence of colonialism. Okinawa is one of those nations living under Japan's political control. Okinawa can sometimes be referred to as Uchina, before imperialism decided they were going to call it Okinawa. But regardless of the name, the island was once living under the independent Ryukyu Kingdom. The people of the island had its own language and customs, its own political structure, and its own economy. It was officially annexed in 1879. But annex is a funny word, because it essentially means to be colonized. Colonialism is a type of imperialism. To understand this from a US perspective, Okinawa is much like Hawaii. Once its own independent kingdom, now fully colonized by the US and fully integrated into the US political and economic structure. In the early 20th century, Japan began rapid industrialization. Along with this, its imperialist ambitions grew, leading to militarizing the island of Okinawa. This militarization, as well as Okinawa's location in East Asia overall, led to one of the most brutal battles of World War II, the Battle of Okinawa. We've all seen movies or read books on this battle. Okinawan children were forced into the Japanese Imperial Army and forced to fight in this battle. One of these children grew up to be Okinawa's future governor, Masahide Ota. A few members of the Global Network and Veterans for Peace had the special occasion of meeting and speaking with Governor Ota. We heard directly about his story in the Battle of Okinawa, as well as how Okinawa has been used in the past century as a pawn for both the US and Japan. After World War II with the surrender of Japan, Okinawa came under the control of the United States. Still a colony, but the colonizer changed. The tensions between the US and the people of Okinawa grew to a boiling point. In 1970, the Koza riots began. Buildings were destroyed, cars were burned, people on both sides were injured, and both the US and Japanese flags were burned at protests. Two years later, in 1972, Okinawa was handed back to Japanese control. Again, still a colony, different colonizer. Okinawa is often referred to as the Keystone of the Pacific. Its location is of grave importance to imperialist powers. The island is in the sweet spot of East Asia, almost in the very center between places like Taiwan, China, both Koreas, Japan, and parts of Russia. 
The size of the island is great for military exercises and installations of weapons. With all the personnel, bases, and equipment and weapons, the US and Japan often repeat the same message. The bases are here to protect you. In reality, the exact opposite is happening. With so much military presence, the island actually becomes a target. Most people understand that any enemy of the US knows that its military will be targeted wherever it's stationed. And if that military is concentrated in one area, that area becomes a target. The history of East Asia, coupled with the location of the island, explains why Okinawa is heavily militarized. But there's another element, racism, or in other words, national oppression. In the US, racism is structurally built into our political, economic, and cultural systems. Racism is but national oppression of different types of people, built from white supremacy. Indigenous peoples were wiped out, Africans were enslaved, other nations of people like Hawaii were colonized. This is the same with Okinawa, only with Japanese supremacy. Too often, while elderly Okinawan people are protesting and resisting the construction of new US military installations, Japanese police are sent to Okinawa from all over mainland Japan and they sound off racial slurs against the elders. It is very common for mainland Japanese people to either be very ignorant of the histories and issues of Okinawa or ignorantly see them as inferior people. Now, this is not to say that all Japanese people are racist, but the political system that dominates the narrative about what is said in mainstream pop culture, mainstream education, and mainstream political narratives, which heavily influence the thinking of the majority of people living in that system, this narrative and conversation always seems to avoid the reality of the colonial system. Just like not all Americans are racist, but the structures that dominate everyone who lives in the United States is racist. Racism, national oppression, is a fundamental part of colonialism no matter where it happens. With this racism, whenever the US pushes for more military bases or whether Japan pulls for more bases, it is always placed on Okinawa. Again, 70% of all US military bases in Japan are concentrated in Okinawa. Let's make one aspect clear. Both the US and Japan are imperialist powers. One aspect of being an imperialist power is to obtain colonies, whether semi-colonies or full colonies. Okinawa is a full colony of Japan, which the US also oppresses. Just like how the US dominates the people of Guam, Japan dominates Okinawa. And although the US is the top dog in the imperialist core, Japan still has ambitions to expand its influence. In fact, these imperialist ambitions are becoming more prominent, especially since Prime Minister Shinzo Abe changed the interpretation of the Article 9 peace constitution, which previously prevented Japan from expanding its military. Today, Japan is building bases outwardly more and more, and Okinawa has long been on that path. So what is the situation like in Okinawa today? Nearly a quarter of the island is made up of US military installations and more are being built. Over 50,000 US troops are stationed there, along with their families as well as contractors. The environment is being destroyed, such as the pristine forests with all its wildlife and the waters surrounding the island, the coral reefs, the water life, much of it is being destroyed and or polluted. Okinawan women, even underage girls, are being sexually assaulted. One of the largest and most disgusting cases when a 12-year-old Okinawan girl was raped and killed by three US troops. Even recently in 2016, when a 16-year-old girl was raped and killed by a former military personnel who worked in Okinawa as a contractor. Reports of sexual assault occur every year. Imagine all the cases which aren't reported. 
The drinking water is being contaminated from the U.S. military installations. A recent study of blood tests have shown that communities are drinking poisoned water. At least half a million people are affected. Noise pollution and fallen equipment from U.S. military aircraft occur almost daily. While U.S. military aircraft pollute the skies above, they too often have equipment and parts from the aircraft fall into very sensitive areas, such as playgrounds of nursery schools. This has been happening for decades. In 1986, the Los Angeles Times reported that, quote, hundreds of aircraft parts fall off military aircraft each year. When it comes to democracy on Okinawa, it's simply thrown out the window. Anywhere between 70 to 85% of the population have voted to remove the foreign military bases. Governors such as Ota, Takeshi Onaga, and the current governor, Denny Tamaki, have run on elected campaigns to oppose these bases. Despite electing leaders and majority votes, the U.S. and Japan refuse to follow any democratic process on the island. These are all but some of the issues with the colonization, militarization, and imperialism on Okinawa. For anyone who stands for democracy of the people, self-determination of the people, justice of the people, then we should all stand in solidarity with the people of Okinawa in their struggle against both U.S. and Japanese imperialism. Okay.